he was completely happy in this room 24 7 and now you know a month later he's not Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It is 9.40 a.m. and all of these toys just came out of one toy box that the cats have. So we're sorting through the toys and we're going to put them in piles by holiday or by style of toy and then i think i'm gonna put the cats on a schedule so like they'll have feather toys one day the next day they'll have like wand toys the next day they'll have cat charmers the next day they'll have pom-poms i think it would be good to rotate them through their toys so they get more variety than just a bunch of toys sitting in a toy box i left the room for two minutes and i come back and this is what's going on. Splash has decided he is going to lay down among the toys. As you can see, I'm putting them in little piles. So we're going to get them organized once and for all. So Splash moved away, but Simba just came. And he decided he needs to lay by the fish. Because Simba loves fish. It's 11.15 a.m. and there's Boo. He's in his room by his window. This is how much cats love having a routine. So my plan for today was to let the upstairs cats, you know, just have the whole house all day, do whatever they want to do, and this is what they want to do. Boo wants to be in his room. And here's Stella. She's laying on my bed. And here's somebody's laying on the bed also. This is what they want to do. And there's Splash. She's in the penthouse. So I just opened the window a little bit wider for them because it's supposed to be an absolutely beautiful day. And I guess since they want to be on this routine, I'll just shut the door and let the kittens up for a while. And yeah, that'll be it. I thought today would be a little bit different, but nope, they want more of the same. It is 7.25 p.m. and here's Sammy. So this is her favorite place to take a nap during the day. This is one of the kitchen chairs. I just gave her a piece of chicken because the cats have all eaten their dinner and Boo is looking for some kind of dessert. So what I've been doing is after they eat their dinner, then sometimes I'll give them like half of a Sheba each or I'll open a can of Fancy Feast Naturals and give them a quarter of a can each. You know, just a little bit of um, cooked food after they eat their raw food or um, a little bit of canned food and today they had some rotisserie chicken and Sammy wanted to come up so all the other kittens are downstairs and Sammy likes to come up usually she comes up walks around and goes back down like she doesn't usually stay up here but today she's hanging out on this kitchen chair and I don't mind her being up here because I don't feel like she's going to attack the other cats and I don't feel like they're going to attack her so far. That has not happened. So I think it's good. And I, Splash has seen her. And, you know, I think with her being up here, it could help Simba and Splash not be so afraid. So right now, Nancy's crying. I think um, she's saying that they want more food downstairs. Okay, there's Nancy. Okay, Sammy's going to go down. You can't come up, Nancy. So they ate all their raw food, and I split a 5.5 ounce can among the plates. They ate most of that, but usually Nancy likes some crunchies, so I give them a little bit of crunchies on these plates, and I'm really just using up some crunchies that I've had for a while. Once they're gone, then that'll be it, and then all the crunchies that I have are just going to be kept for the automatic feeder. I put a few crunchies on each plate, and this is what happens. Nancy eats some, Richard eats some. Sometimes someone else will eat some, but it's usually just these two. It is 9 a.m., and I'm trying something new today. So I'm feeding the cats their breakfast here in the kitchen, and I want to see how this goes. So Stella, Simba, and Boo are eating here and splashes under the table. And if I could get them to a point where they're comfortable eating here, then it means the play rug is for play and not for food. And that's been an issue. So because I've been feeding them their food on their play rug, 
what happens is now whenever I go to the play rug, they think they're getting food or they think they're getting snacks. And I don't want that to be the case because I want them to play there. Like that's their space where they can play. And obviously they do play in other areas of the house also. But if I'm going to sit down and play with them, like I need a space to do that. And that is the space for that. And what's happened is it's become a space for them to eat. So I'd rather that they ate in the kitchen because this is a better place for them to eat. So we'll see how it goes. If I need to rearrange some things, I could eventually do that. But for now, um, this is fine. There's Splash, he's under the table. Splash usually is the best eater. If I give him something that he's had before, he usually eats it without any issues. If he tries something new, he's usually afraid of it, but if it's something he's familiar with, he's usually the best eater. And look at that, Simba's done already. Simba ate so fast. I hope he's not going to be sick from eating so fast. Here's Boo, and today his new microbiome test is supposed to arrive. So I have his room all set up for him. I already scooped out the litter. I put some fresh litter in the litter boxes and hopefully after he eats he'll go into his room and then I'm just going to shut the door and I'm going to keep him in there until he poops. So if he poops today then he's a free man but if he doesn't poop today he's going to be in that room until he poops because I really want to do another uh, microbiome test and see how it compares to his first one. Um, his first one was absolutely horrible. But it was also a few days after taking antibiotics. And he's been on probiotics for the past month, as well as mostly homemade raw food with a lot of good supplements. So I want to see what kind of difference there will be with his test now versus uh, about a month ago. Boo's in his room. He wanted more of the freeze-dried chicken on his food. So I picked up his plate, put it in here, gave him the chicken in here, and he came in here. So now he's in this room until he poops. The kittens and I are having some play time. This is one of their favorite toys. It came in a set of wand toys. It's kind of like, like a snowball on a string. But they love it, especially Ringo. But Ziggy loves it too. There's Goldie. Some of them like playing with the stick better. Richard's nibbling on my finger. There's Nancy. And there's Ziggy. Ziggy loves any kind of wand toys. It is 9.05 a.m. and Boo threw up last night several times. So he threw up on the, the green grass mat that I have near the litter boxes. So I put that outside. I have to clean it off today. And he also threw up on the yellow runner that I have on the shelves by the window. And it went through the runner to the non-skid mat underneath. So I put the runner in the laundry and I have to take the, the other pad outside and uh, clean it off. Also, I had a cat bed here in the corner and he threw up on part of the cat bed. And here's Boo now. Now, Boo was at the Zoomies this morning, so he's acting normal. Uh, he slept on my bed for part of the night and then um, I don't know what he did the rest of the night. And he's been acting normal this morning, so I don't know if it was just an upset stomach yesterday or if it was stress. So the plan for yesterday was to keep him in this room because I need to get a stool sample out of him. I have the second microbiome test that I need him to take. And in order for him to take the test, I need a stool sample. So the plan was to keep him in this room isolated until I got the stool sample. Well, 
he wasn't having it. He wanted to come out. Splash wanted to come in. So I don't know if it was the stress of that that was like causing the issues. It was really strange because in the past he had no problem. He had no problem being in this room by himself for a week. He was so happy with that. But now, maybe because he's feeling better now, he's like, no, I don't want to be in that room. Or maybe it's because, you know, it's not part of his schedule. He's been in the room during the day and he wants to come out at night. I don't know, but he was completely happy in this room 24-7, and now, you know, a month later, he's not. It is almost 10 a.m., and here's Boo. So, Boo did not want to eat his breakfast today, which was odd, but then I remembered that they had snacks last night. And I have not been hungry this morning because I had snacks last night. So maybe their schedule's off and that's why he's not hungry. Stella only ate half of her breakfast and that's really not like her either. So I don't know. Simba ate all his food and Splash ate all his food. And I did give Boo a churu and he ate the churu. And Stella ate a squeeze up. So I don't know. Maybe their schedule's off. Maybe... I don't know, maybe they just don't feel like eating. I mean, we'll see how the day goes and we'll see if they eat their dinner. And um, also, Boo's here in his office. He's not in his room. So this is very different uh, this morning. So neither Stella nor Boo wanted to go into the bedrooms. Um, so I was like, okay. Then I went outside and I was out in the yard for a little while. I just came back in and I went into my room to change and Stella came into the room. So right now, Stella, Splash, and Simba are in my room. And here's Boo. He just jumped off the cat tower. That's what's left of Stella's meal. What's the matter, Boo? You got an itch? And I think I'm going to let the cats up and let Boo do what he wants to do. If he doesn't want to go in his room, he doesn't have to go in his room. He can hang out with the cats, but that means I have to keep an eye on things and have spray bottles ready um, in case... Nancy or anyone tries to jump on him. The only uh, ones I'm concerned about are really Nancy and Richard. Uh, the others have been fine. So here's Boo. He's in his room. I gave him his food and I put some freeze-dried chicken on it and he followed me into the room. So maybe he'll eat it and maybe he'll just hang out in his room today because I need to get a lot of stuff done, Boo. Grandma and Grandpa are coming tomorrow. I have to get a lot of stuff done. <laughs> You're not coming up today because you're going to hide. You're going to freak out, guys. I'm doing this to save you from freaking out. Because if you freak out upstairs with the other cats, it's going to be a double freak out, okay? Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's mail time for the cats. Let's open up the mail and let's see what the cats got. I'm here with Boo and Stella, and there's Simba. Let's start with an envelope. We have an envelope with a cute little bird sticker on the back. And look at this card, isn't it cute? Look at all of the cats on it. There's seven cats on it. It's like the seven kittens. Isn't that adorable? And check this out. So here's like a tuxedo cat like Sammy. And then there's two of these brown cats or um, like orange cats. And then there's two of the gray cats and then two of these white and brown and black cats. So it's really like the kittens because I have two marble tabbies, two mackerel tabbies, and two torties, and then the one tuxedo. That is so cute. Thank you very, very much. This says, happy anniversary to Simba and Splash. I love you so much. And also Zoe, my little old cat. And Boo's here. Boo says hello. It says, ask treats to your mother that it is right day and shares with your mom, cat Stella, and dad Boo. And maybe a few with the kitties. Did mom, lady LF, make a special cake? Be happy with grandma and grandpa and you will receive a lot of kisses. Happy birthday from Nicole LaRue and Zoe. And there's Zoe in her dress. Isn't she cute? Thank you so much, Nicole, for this lovely card. Simba and Splash say thank you very much. And your donation will be put to very good use for 
some treats and toys for the cats. To be honest, we haven't really even celebrated their birthday yet. Things have been really hectic and crazy here. So they've had some special treats and we had a catnip party, but they still haven't had their special birthday dinner yet or their birthday toys. So we're looking forward to doing that soon. It's very nice of you to think of them. Thank you so much for this adorable card. And here's another card with some pretty flowers on the back. And this says, it's your birthday. Celebrate, indulge, eat cake topped with bacon. It won't kill you. Look at the cake topped with the bacon. I've never seen anything like that. I actually think it would probably be pretty good. Everything goes good with bacon, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It says, okay, it might kill you, but you'll die happy. That's very, very true. Happy birthday, Nicola Rue and Zoe. And there's little Zoe. And she says, don't do that. It is the worst thing that can make you very sick, but it can be good for the taste once in a year. Ha ha ha. The bow on the cake is very festive and this is for your day. Please keep the money only for you and do not share with any cat. He he he. Thank you so much, Nicole, for this funny birthday card and for your generous gift. It's very nice of you to think of me and I'll definitely buy something special with your gift. We hope you're doing well and we hope you're having a great day. Okay, now let's open this package. It says tear to open. And this says enjoy your gift from Charles Cook. There's Simba. Hey Simba. And we got two PetSmart gift cards. That is awesome. And two Petco gift cards. Thank you so much, Charles, for these gift cards. That was very generous of you. And these will definitely be put to good use on cat supplies. I get cat litter and some canned food and some dry food at Petco and PetSmart. So these will definitely be put to good use for our monthly supplies. And here's another package. Let's open this one. This says, happy birthday to my favorite twins, Simba and Splash. Treats for everybody, the cat family, the kitten family, and the human family from Enigma 26A. Thank you so much, Enigma 26A. It looks like this is an Amazon gift card. It's a very festive box. Look how cute it opens up with balloons and a happy birthday sign. Isn't that adorable? And there's an Amazon gift card. Thank you so much, Enigma. That will definitely be put to good use whenever I need something that I can't buy in any of the local stores for the cats. I usually go to Amazon for something like that. And the cats have really been enjoying the freeze dried chicken treats that I've been getting on Amazon. So the next time I get them, they'll be on your treat. Thank you so much, Enigma, for this very generous and awesome gift. Okay, and here we have a box, and that's Stella's tail. She's sitting on top of the round toy thing. Sorry, Stella, I hit your tail. Ooh, and look what we have here. This says, enjoy your gift from Charles Cook. Charles, you're completely spoiling the cast. Those gift cards were amazing, and now they're getting treats too. So look what we have here. We have a whole bunch of dried minnows. Simba loves these. And we have a tub of churus, and these are tuna varieties. Tuna with chicken, tuna with scallop, tuna with salmon, and tuna. These are great. Um, I know whenever Stella has an upset stomach, she loves the pink one. And Boo had kind of an upset stomach yesterday, and he really likes this light blue one and uh, these are great to have on hand and of course the cats just enjoy them in general so thank you so much these will be a nice treat for splash and simba for their birthday celebration we have another package here this is from sharon let's see what she sent to the cats i'm trying to be careful not to cut the fabric look at that Look at this beautiful quilt. Look at how colorful that is. That's gorgeous. Boo's coming over. Boo, look at this quilt. You smell in the package. And check out the other side. Look, it's like watercolor cats and they're watercoloring. That is so adorable. Thank you very much, Sharon. 
Oh my gosh, and look at this one. I think Boo has claimed it. Boo loves anything that's like red, but he also likes yellow and he also likes pink. So even though this quilt might look kind of feminine, I think Boo really likes it. Right, Boo? Boo likes kind of girly things sometimes. That's his soft side. For a thug, he has like his thug side, but he also has his delicate girly side. Right, Boo? Boo says there's nothing wrong with being in touch with your feminine side. And here comes Stella, but she sees Boo, so she's backing away. Thank you so much, Sharon. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors as much as Boo loves them. Right, Boo? Boo says he wants this in his room, and he says this would look very nice on his day sofa, which right now just has like a yellow blanket on it. And this would look perfect, right, Boo? What's the other side look like? Look! And the other side is stars. Purple stars, blue stars, green stars, red stars. So this is what the day sofa looks like right now. I have yellow on it because it's May. And there it is with the quilt. It looks so nice. And the colors match everything. The red in the quilt match the red in the curtains, although those curtains you know they've seen better days they need to be replaced and there's a blue runner by the window right now there's blue in this quilt so boo says it's perfect thank you so much sharon look at this one it has little hedgehogs on it that is so cute it has squirrels with acorns it also has squirrels with acorns and some owls this one kind of feels a little bit autumny to me maybe because of the colors and because of the woodland creatures they always make me think of autumn. I don't know why. And on the back, it's all bananas. And look at this one. Isn't this pretty? I love the colors. I love the little floral fabrics. That is so gorgeous. And on the back, there's little heart-shaped flowers. This one feels very summery to me also. And there's a note. It says, Hi, LF. I wanted to send you a few more quilts that I hope you can use or you know someone who can. Thanks for all of the great videos. I am enjoying them immensely. Hugs and purrs, Sharon and Sunday. Thank you so much, Sharon, for these awesome quilts. If there's any that I don't use, I will certainly pass them on. And look what we have here. Look, Stella's playing with it. <laughs> Stella has decided that she's going to play with this. Stella, that's not for you to play with. That's not for you to bite. Stella. Look at all of the cats. This fabric is adorable. So this is a round cover for the mini trampoline that I have downstairs for the rebounder. And it's been working really, really well um, with having a cover on it. And the cats like to lay on the cover. It turns it into like a giant cat bed. And also they like to play with it. And with the ties, I could actually tie it onto the rebounder so they don't keep taking it off and that's what they were doing when I had when I had blankets on top of it they would just keep taking the blankets off I think Stella wants to turn this into a toy though Stella Stella you think this is a game Stella is this a game for you Stella says this is her new cat toy And there's Splash. He just showed up. I guess he wants to play also. All right, guys. You grab a stick. Okay. So with the so with a game like this, you need a stick. Like a wand toy. Here comes Simba. Oh, look at this. Look. Sharon, I think you just invented a new a new toy for cats. 
It's similar to the, you know, the cat's meow toy that I have with the, the wand that goes around like that electronic toy. Except this is like a manual version of it. And because this round material is larger, it works better manually. And we got another quilt and Simba has claimed this one. Simba says he looks very handsome on this quilt. So this is his quilt. Okay, Simba, you can have this one. Simba says that's his quilt. And we also got some more cat tower inserts. These have been working so well. So yesterday I went around to the cat towers and I took these inserts out and they were just covered in cat hair especially around the edges so I just took like a brush and took all the cat hair off and I threw these in the wash and then I threw them in the dryer and yeah awesome they just are totally keeping my cat towers so much cleaner so I'm so happy to have these Sharon so look at this it's beautiful blue with cats on it is there another one beautiful blue with all these cats on it look at this it's like buttons all different buttons. Simba says he wants this one because it looks like him. How did you know that, Simba? Simba says that looks like him, so he wants this in his favorite cat tower. Okay, we'll put that in your favorite cat tower, Simba. And then we have some polka dots. Very cute. Oh, and look at these. Look at these cats. It kind of looks like they have birthday hats on. Do you see that? That's so cute. I don't know where Sharon finds all this different, unique fabric. That's adorable. Thank you so much, Sharon, for these awesome cat tower inserts. They are so helpful. And now I have plenty so I could swap them out and put some in the wash and keep clean ones in the cat towers. Thank you so much. And here's another quilt. Isn't that gorgeous? Here comes Stella. Look, look at this. Stella says she wants this one. Okay, Stella. I thought this one was a bit more masculine, but you can have this one if you like it. Stella says she really likes this one. Okay, Stella. This will be your quilt. Okay? Good? She says she looks very pretty on it. You do, Stella. You look very pretty on this. And on the back, what's on the back? On the back, there is a nice wintry plaid. You're so pretty, Stella. Stella says thank you very much, Sharon, for thinking of the cats and for sending them these goodies. It is 10.45 a.m. Today is going to be a beautiful day. There's not a cloud in the sky right now. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be about 85 degrees. And here's Boo. He's in his office. And Grandma and Grandpa are going to be visiting today. They should be here any minute. So the cats have a bit of a different schedule today. I'm not letting the kittens up right now because once Grandma and Grandpa get here, they're probably going to run and hide. So right now they're still downstairs. And Boo, Stella, Splash, and Zimba can be anywhere they want to be in the house right now. So this is where Boo is. And here are Splash and Simba. They're laying on my bed. They love this routine. They eat their breakfast and they're like, okay, we're going to hang out in the bedroom. And there's Stella. She's on top of the cat tower. I don't know what she's watching, but all the windows are open today because it's such a beautiful day. Hello, Splashy. How are you? You're a good boy, Splashy. How are you, Splashy? Splash, you're so handsome. You're so handsome, Splash. Splash, do you know how handsome you are? Do you? Boo says he's waiting for his grandma. She's gonna be here soon, Boo, okay? She's gonna be here soon. It's 11 a.m. and this is what's going on here. So the cats wanna come up because this is their usual routine coming up. 
but I'm not letting them up today because they're just gonna run and hide when grandma and grandpa get here. You can't come up yet, okay? If you guys if you guys are nice to grandma and grandpa, you could come up later, okay? Yeah, because they want to meet you. They want to see you and they want to meet you. You're not going anywhere, Nancy, okay? I'm holding the door shut behind me. I'm just squashing myself against the gate right now. You guys can come up later, but you got to meet grandma and grandpa first, okay? Is that our deal? Because they haven't met you yet. They've been here quite a few times and you keep hiding on them, okay? So when they get here, if you meet them, if you let them pet you, then you could come up, okay? Right? You going to be nice to grandma and grandpa? Are you guys going to be nice to grandma and grandpa? They're going to come here today and visit, okay? You going to be nice to them? Right, Ziggy? So, this morning, I found a yellow jacket in the kitchen. And... Um, I was trying to kind of capture it so I could take it outside, but it didn't work. So I ended up opening the window a few inches and then just leaving the window open. And I thought it flew out, but it ends up it did not fly out. What it did was somehow managed to get downstairs and into the laundry room. I have no idea how it did that. So when I went down to the laundry room, I saw a yellow jacket in there. And I was able to get it out of the laundry room. And it flew up the steps toward the back door. And I figured, okay, I'll come up and maybe it'll be near the back door and I could just open the door and let it out. What happened was one of the cats must have tackled it because um, the cats chased it up here. And where Ziggy is now, that's where Sammy was. And the yellow jacket was on the ground and Sammy was like looking at it and trying to figure it out. So I kind of shooed her away. Then I was able to open the door and just kind of shoo it out and then it flew off. So they didn't injure it, but they did tackle it. So it was on the ground and I was able to then shoo it out the door. So it all worked out well. I gave them a lot of praise. I said it was good teamwork and Ziggy loves hunting bugs. Ziggy loves playing with wand toys. Like she loves playing with toys and she loves hunting bugs. She's a very, very active cat and so is Nancy. These two are very active. You can't come up yet, Nancy. And that's how Nancy whines. Nancy, I've never heard a cat whine like Nancy whines. Nancy, you gonna whine again? You gonna show everyone how you whine? You can tell when Nancy is miserable because she. She'll just whine and whine and whine. She's not doing it right now, though. Okay? So anyway, so there's Ziggy and Nancy. And, and, there's, and there's Richard and... And there's Richard and Goldie on the steps. And I don't know where anyone else is. One other thing I should mention about Goldie and Ziggy is that I've really noticed that they are like orange tabbies with black thrown in. Especially if you look at parts of Ziggy's face, you can see the orange stripes and like on her body also, especially in certain lighting. In certain lighting, you really notice it. Which I think is really cool. I never knew torties were orange tabbies with black. I just thought they were like orange and black. Like a mix of orange and black. But these guys are definitely orange stripes with black. And that's Richard. Richard could be a crybaby. He doesn't whine like Nancy. He's more of a crybaby. Oh and here's Sammy. Hey Sammy. Last time Grandma and Grandpa were here, Sammy came so close to meeting them. Like she was hiding behind some books on a bookshelf downstairs. And then I, uh, a little while later when she came out, I picked her up and I brought her to the top of the steps. And I was calling Grandma over and I was like, come meet Sammy, come meet Sammy. But as soon as she heard Grandma coming toward the door, she just freaked out and flew down the stairs and hit again. So... We'll see what happens today. You gonna meet Grandma and Grandpa Sammy? 
Are you guys going to meet Grandma and Grandpa, or are you going to hide again? Are you guys going to meet Grandma and Grandpa, or are you going to hide again? But do you see what I mean about cats being on a routine? Like, they know their routine is usually to come upstairs after they eat. You're not coming up, Sammy. Just trying to climb the gate, but, like, I'm here. Okay, guys. All right? Let me shut the door. Oh, there's little Eva. Hello, little Eva. How are you? Oh, and there's Ringo. We have all six cats except for... We have six cats except for Nancy. See, they, they all want to come upstairs. Goldie on the bottom, followed by Ringo, then little Eva, then Richard, then Sammy and Ziggy. Hey, get down. Get down. You're not coming up today because you're going to hide. You're going to freak out, guys. I'm doing this to save you from freaking out because if you freak out upstairs with the other cats, it's going to be a double freak out, okay? We have to remember that. It's not just a single freak out. It'll be a double freak out because the cats are all upstairs wherever they want to be. Okay, guys. I'm going to shut the door, okay? Now all seven are here. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay? And Ziggy don't care. She just wants to hunt bugs. <laughs> Look at Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. Here's Boo on his new quilt. He looks so handsome on his quilt. It's 2.45 p.m. and look at this. Sammy came upstairs. I gave her a few treats. Look at this and here's Nancy. The two of them, are they gonna go walk around? Look what they did to Stella's catnip plant. Oh my gosh. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Today is Mother's Day, and Stella gets her bouquet of catnip.
It's a tradition that every year Stella gets some fresh catnip on Mother's Day. She gets her own bouquet of catnip. This year they did not have any catnip at the local nurseries or plant stores. I don't know why. So I had to get this at PetSmart. Thankfully they had it. Stella is usually very possessive of the catnip. I don't know what happened when I left the room. Who just showed up? I just rubbed the leaves because sometimes you have to rub it to get the aroma going. Oh, now she's interested. Okay, let's rub it. Let's rub all the leaves. Let's rub all the leaves. Rub all the leaves. Okay, so we rub the leaves. Oh, <laughs> she's like, don't touch it. <laughs> it's a trap. don't like this kind much. The kind I usually get has a little bit larger leaves than this. Like I have a bunch of catnip growing outside but it's not really ready yet. It's still a little bit too small to harvest. Okay that was good Stella. I'm gonna share this with Boo. Is that okay? Can I share this with Boo? Boo would you like this? Stella's not too happy about that. Stella, they could have one one leaf each, okay? Here, I'll give a leaf to Splash. There you go, Splash. And I'll give a leaf to Simba, okay? You could share a leaf. You got a lot of leaves. Okay. Good, Stella? Everybody knows better than to try to get Stella's catnip. Right, Splash? Is 
Sim is looking at it. Happy Mother's Day, Stella. Stella will get lots of spa treatments later. And she'll get to do everything she wants to do today, right? Right, Stella? Today is your day. Do you want breakfast? You guys want to eat breakfast? Stella says she would like a squeeze up. Happy Mother's Day, Stella. Stella gets her favorite pink churu and she's letting Simba have some of the catnip. Stella's favorite flavors are the pink and the purple. Okay, Stella, hold on. I got to get it out of the bottom, okay? Hold on. Let's push it up from the bottom. Good job, Stella. Notice how none of the other cats are trying to eat the churu. It's because they know today is Stella's special day. Good job. I think we're done, Stella. Here, let's try to get more from the bottom. Ready? There you go. Good job. Good job. There you go. Good job. You did it, Stella. It is almost 1 p.m. right now, and there's Boo. He is relaxing by an open window. He's been really happy to be in his room today. And Stella, Splash, and Simba are in my room. Um, so Stella and Simba went into my room, no problem this morning, but Splash didn't want to go in. So I was like, okay, you don't have to go in, Splash. So I went outside. I was enjoying some sunshine for a while. Then all of a sudden I heard the doorbell ring. And I was like, that's weird. I'm not really expecting anyone right now. So I looked to see who was there and it appeared to be some solicitations. Um, but what happened was when they rang the doorbell, it scared Splash and he ran into my room. So um, he was happy in my room, so I just shut the door. So the three of them are in my room now. And what just happened, here's Ziggy. So Ziggy was on the other side of the door. She was in the hallway and she was making so much noise. She was meowing and howling and crying and I was like what is going on so I opened the door and she came in and she went under the day sofa and there's Boo how you doing Boo you're a good boy and Ziggy's under the day sofa maybe she wants to leave maybe that's why she came out so I don't know Ziggy you want to leave 
I open the door for her and she could come out if she wants to, but I can't leave the door open because I don't want Richard going in there. Because I really don't want... There he is. You're not going in there. You're not going in there, Richard, because you don't know how to behave around cats. There's Ziggy. She just came out. She's in there for 10 minutes. It's 5.15 p.m. Look at Ziggy. She's all stretched out. Goldie was laying next to her, but then when I walked over, Goldie left. This is Ziggy's favorite afternoon spot. She loves stretching out over here in the sun. It's 7.30 a.m. and look at what's going on here. So this is a brand new toy that I ordered on Amazon. It was part of a set of wand toys for cats. Hey boo, good morning. And I gave this to the cats, what, a half hour ago? Not even. And look, it's already broken. So this is the wand toy and it was attached to this stick, which is attached to a suction cup, which uh, I have attached to a wall. And this is the toy that was attached to the end of this. And yeah, it's completely broken in less than an hour. And I know Boo is the one that did it because he was the one playing with it. So I just tied it back on. It's on like an elastic string. And uh, I knotted it back on. So we'll see if that lasts. It is 10.45 a.m. and this is Stella. And Stella and Boo are on cat towers in the living room and the dining room. And Simba and Splash are in my room. And all the kittens are on free roam right now. And Nancy um, was down here a few minutes ago and she was getting ready to attack Stella. So I just gave her a squirt with the spray bottle and she uh, went away. And she's in the kitchen now. Right now, Richard is in Boo's room with the door shut because he's an issue. And if I could get Nancy um, near Boo's room, I'm going to pick her up and put her in there with Richard. And then that would be fine. If those two were just in Boo's room, then we're good. And here's Boo. So neither Boo nor Stella wanted to go in the bedroom this, this morning. So here's Stella. I just picked her up and I put her on my bed because Nancy tried to ambush her again. And I need to get work done today and I can't be watching both Stella and Boo. So if I'm sitting near Boo, then at least I could keep an eye on him. If anyone tries to ambush him, uh, they're going to get hit with a spray bottle. I just gave Stella her Mother's Day catnip, so she should be happy with that. I'll move it more toward the center of the bed so she doesn't knock it down onto the floor. Zimba's looking at it. Here's Boo in his office, which is just a few feet away from me sitting at the dining room table getting work done. And there's Nancy. Boo is just hissing and growling at her. He doesn't trust her. Neither do I. But I'm standing here with a squirt bottle. Now Richard came over a few times. He got almost as close as where Nancy is now and Boo growled and he walked away but we know Nancy is a little bit more mischievous sounds like there's a truck outside so here's Richard he settled into this cat tower in the living room so that's good and there goes Nancy. If she settles here, then we're fine. Then I could actually get some work done. Look at this. That's Nancy. Boo's growling and hissing. I need to vacuum. It's 11.38 a.m. And Boo is growling again because Nancy's back. She's probably around six feet away from Boo. I have my eye on her. She might just 
be curious about Boo, which is fine if she just wants to look at him, that's fine, but if she thinks she's gonna attack him, then she has another thing coming. Okay, so she's settling into Stella's castle. So Nancy loves laying in Stella's castle and she likes to take naps in Stella's castle. So it's fine if she lays in there, takes a nap, that's fine. Boo just settled down, he wants to take a nap. So if she behaves herself, everything is good. But remember, Nancy is Dennis the Menace. Do you think Dennis the Menace is going to just settle in and everything is fine? So, as I get my work done, I have to have one eye on my computer and another eye on the cats. It's 8.10 a.m. I'm trying to get ready for my day, so I just put some toys on for the cats. Sometimes they don't like playing with them, but sometimes they do. But I find if I put a toy on this round cover that Sharon sent, then the cats are more interested. They love this round cover. For some reason, they think it's like a, a play mat for them. It's 9.43 a.m. All of the cats have been fed and they're getting a little bit of freeze-dried chicken for dessert. And look at Stella. She's back on this round fabric with one of the toys. The cats downstairs got some playtime this morning. They got some treats. I like to give them treats in the morning so I can just kind of get a head count, make sure everyone's okay, and they all come up to me, eat a treat out of my hand, except for Eva. I have to toss her a treat, but um, it's kind of like a good roundup. And then they had some playtime to kind of use up some energy. Then they all eat their they all eat their food. And is Boo gonna try to steal Simba's plate? Everyone has a good appetite today. It's 11.15 a.m. The kittens are upstairs. Stella Boo, Splash, and Simba are in the bedrooms, and I put some toys on for the cats, and they've been playing with them here on this round cover, but of course, the minute I turn the camera on, they decide to leave. <gasps> and I just realized they killed the catnip plant. Oh my gosh. Look what they did to Stella's catnip plant. Oh my gosh. So I left the catnip plant out thinking, okay, maybe they'd like to nibble on it. Nope, they wanted to destroy it. Look what they did to this, this poor plant. It's like, there's like nothing left to it. It's totally mangled. I don't know who did this. I'm gonna have to look at the security camera footage and see if it caught anything, but I guess I'm gonna have to put this outside to see if it can kind of come back to life a little bit. I feel bad for Stella. I might have to go buy her another one or actually I'm gonna check on the catnip growing in the yard and see if it's gotten bigger. Who did that, Nancy? Did you do that? Who did that? <coughs> Peace be with you, Sammy. Peace be with you, Richard. Peace be with you, Goldie. Peace be with you, Nancy. Nancy. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 9.15 a.m. and there's Simba. He's laying in the cat -it track. That's how he likes to play with it. And here's Boo. So the cats all got brushed this morning, I gave them fresh water, and we did some general cleaning, and I tried to have playtime with them, and it did not go successfully, so that's why I took out the camera to make this video. So the cats have been off of crunchies, so they've been getting mostly homemade raw food, and occasionally I will give them some low carb canned food, like a few varieties of Fancy Feast Naturals or a few varieties of Sheba's. Um, those are really low carb foods. And for snacks, they've been getting freeze dried chicken and Simba loves his freeze dried minnows. There's Simba. And we've been sticking to uh, the lower carb options. 
So yesterday I forgot to defrost raw food for the cats because I wanted to make a new batch of raw food for the cats. And I thought, well, I'll just make a new batch and they could eat off the new batch. The problem was I didn't start making the new batch until later than I wanted to. And by that time, all of the cats were just getting under my feet. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give them all food. They'll get some canned food and then you know, I'll just make the homemade food and I'll just put it in the freezer and they'll have it for future days. So that's what I did, but then I ended up having a bunch of distractions while I was making the raw food. So I finished making it later than I thought I would. And at that point I was like really tired. I had not eaten dinner yet. So I ordered some takeout. And when I got back, Nancy, was just crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. I'm like, what do you want? Now, Nancy is a crunchy fiend. All she likes to eat is crunchies and she doesn't shut up until she gets crunchies. So I gave them a bunch of crunchies downstairs and then I came back up and I was like, you know what? These guys have not had crunchies in a while. So let me give them some crunchies too. Now I only gave them about one tablespoon each. That's it. And I was like, you know, don't think this is going to be a regular habit. You're not getting as much as you used to get. I'm only giving you one tablespoon each. Well, they devoured the crunchies that I gave them. And they were very happy to have the crunchies. And then shortly after that, I went to bed. And what I noticed was that none of the cats were active last night or this morning. And usually what's been happening since the cats have been eating healthier, mostly homemade, low carb, is that they've been more active, especially in the early morning hours and especially in the morning. Like Simba or Stella normally will jump on me the minute they hear me move in the morning. They're like, okay, time to wake up. And even Boo's more active in the morning he'll be like looking out the windows or doing something like usually the cats have been awake before I've been awake. And today I woke up at like 6 a.m. but I didn't get out of bed until seven. I just like laid there checking emails on my tablet and um, watching some YouTube videos and stuff like that. And none of the cats were active. And even when I got out of bed around 7 a.m., all of the cats were still sleeping. They were all still in bed. So I wanted to document that because I really think the difference was in the fact that they had canned food for dinner and then they had a crunchy snack later in the night. Because the way they acted this morning after having crunchies last night is the way they used to act when they were getting crunchies every night, which was none of the cats were morning cats. I always used to say, yeah, my cats are not morning people. They like to sleep in. Well, I think that happens when you feed them crunchies at night. It's good if you want to get a really good rest yourself because it keeps the cats kind of like almost like sedated through the night. But if you want to have active cats, it's really, really not good. And that's one thing I noticed, and I just wanted to document that. It's 10, 13 a.m. The cats all ate their breakfast, and the downstairs cats just finished theirs, and they're kind of wanting to come up. So I said, let me come upstairs and see where the cats are. Look where the cats are. All three of them laying on the bed, booze walking around. It is 9 a.m. and I just found this on my living room sofa. And I believe it was Boo. I just checked the security camera footage and Boo was laying here on this cushion last night and then I went to bed and around one o'clock in the morning, it looks like he got up and did this. It's on the sofa cushion and it's on, on the floor. Here's Boo. So last night the cats got a snack and I have not been giving the cats a snack at night recently. So the day before last night, they got some crunchies as a snack. And then yesterday I found a pile of crunchy vomit. So I cleaned it up and I was thinking, okay, well maybe it's Boo because he probably made a pig of himself and you know ate other people's food also. And then today I woke up and I found this. And this is like the worst I've ever had to clean up um, because it's been sitting there for about eight hours and it's on 
my sofa cushions, so I don't even know how I'm gonna get that clean. If Boo's gonna throw up every time he gets a nighttime snack, they're not getting nighttime snacks anymore. They're just gonna go back to two meals a day. That's what they were on for a while, and that'll be it. Right, Boo? So here's what it looks like after I cleaned it up with the Nature's Miracle Stain and Odor Eliminator. And then I followed it up with the Hoover Spotless Spot Cleaner. And hopefully um, it'll dry the same color as it should be. Because you can see it's darker where it's wet. So I'm just hoping it doesn't dry like that. I hope when it dries it's not noticeable and yeah what we're just gonna have to see because you never know um, how things are gonna dry so fingers crossed that will dry okay it's now a few days later and this is what these sofa cushions look like I am so happy that I have that Hoover spotless spot cleaner because it really did a wonderful job in getting these clean so I think they're back to looking like they did before Boo vomited on them. Here's Boo, he's been laying by this pop and play toy and I just wanted to talk about it for a minute because the kittens like this toy, like I put it on and the little mouse pops out of the holes. But with regards to Boo, he doesn't like playing it when the mouse pops out of the holes. What he does is like right now when it's not on, he likes to put his paws in the hole and pull the mouse out. Right now there's no mouse sticking out, but if I come back later, there's usually a mouse sticking out. There's Simba, here's Boo. He says he wants his breakfast. The cats have not eaten their breakfast yet. I have to give them their food. So let me tell you what's going on here with these cat towers. So I've noticed that over the past few days, when the kittens come up in the afternoon, they like laying in these cat towers and there's usually a kitten in each tower. And what happened the other day was uh, Ziggy was sitting here on the like arm of the chair because there was not an empty cat tower. Now I do have two other cat towers um, in the dining room. So there's two in the living room windows and there's two in the dining room windows. And they get like really good views of the woods. That's why the cats love these cat towers because when they're sitting in these cat towers they can see like everything that's going on on the street as well as like they get a really good view of the woods and any animals coming in and out and all that stuff so i felt bad for ziggy because you know she was just on the chair so i was thinking i need to move the cat condo back here to where it was so i used to have a cat tower a cat condo and a cat tower and then when things got all shifted around you know with the kittens coming in and stuff like that i just move stuff around i think i'm going to put the cat tower back here in the middle and we'll see what happens if if three cats end up using it then it's worth it uh, if not, I was thinking maybe I should just put some shelves back here because I have the two sets of shelves in Boo's room and I used to have the cat towers in Boo's room, but I took them out uh, and I just based on who's in Boo's room um, and you know whether they're sick or healthy is whether I have cat towers or shelves in there. At one point I did have both of the shelves here uh, under this window, but I mean, that could work, but Boo loves the shelves in his room, so I would definitely leave one there. I don't know. They do like the cat towers also, and they do scratch on them. I mean, I could get more shelves to put under this window, but they like scratching on the cat towers, and they can't scratch on the shelves. So that's another issue. Um, yeah, for right now, I'm just going to put the condo here. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the condo is back between the cat towers and we'll see how the kittens like it. If they use it, maybe Boo will use it because he likes that more than the cat towers. And overall, I find that cats do like it when you rearrange furniture. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do with it. So I've been trying to get the cats to eat their food in the kitchen, but they like eating it on their play rug. They definitely feel ownership of this rug because it is their rug, like this is their space. So they do like eating here. So they're having some homemade raw food for breakfast today with a little bit of freeze dried chicken sprinkled on top. 
I should also mention that we are now at the point where I don't have to put gates in this door anymore. This is the door between the kitchen and downstairs. And I used to have to put a gate in the door because the cats would just bang on the door at night and there'd be like a lot of scratching. Do you see what they did to the door paint? Yeah, they've been scratching the paint off of the door. So at least that's progress that I don't have to put the gate in the door anymore. And even if I open the door and there are kittens on this side of the door, they don't automatically run up because what they've found is when they do, they get met by the other cats and that scares them. And then they come back down. So this is a piece that I've had in the living room, this square piece with the scratcher and there's like a brush on it. And I've had this for years. I originally bought it years ago for Boo, but he doesn't like it. He likes arches and he doesn't like the brush on this one. So I've had it in various locations upstairs and no one has really played with it or enjoyed it. So I was like, let me bring it downstairs. This will be the final hurrah. If they use it down here, we can keep it. And if not, it's gonna go. So this is where I put it maybe an hour ago. And as we can see, Sammy and little Eva have been enjoying it so far. So on the bottom in that platform, uh, there's like a ball in there and there's holes where the cats can stick their paws. So it looks like they're enjoying that part of it. Now there is a hunting box toy upstairs and what happens is the cats get the balls out of it really easily and then goodbye balls, like I don't know where they go. So there's, there's Ringo. He's sticking his paws way in there. He loves anything that has like pom-poms or balls with it. That's his favorite toy. Anything with like a ball. So I start my morning cat routine with brushing and the upstairs cats get brushed and the downstairs cats get brushed, although only three of them let me brush them. And that is Richard, Sammy, and Nancy who's sitting over there. But I do try to brush the others, they just run from it. So I don't want to freak them out too much so I don't get really aggressive with trying to brush them. But I'm hoping that the three that allow me to brush them just set good examples for the others. And Richard sheds so much hair or fur, whatever you want to call it. Out of all the cats down here, I get the most off of him. And Another thing that I wanted to mention is that so far, so far these kittens have very different fur than the upstairs cats. Um, their fur is much shorter. Are we going to nibble on my arm? Um, it's definitely much shorter and much finer. So Sammy's fur has gotten very thick. I don't know if it's the raw food or... It's just how her fur is, but out of all the cats down here, she tends to have fur that's most like the cats upstairs, which is thick and fluffy. Um, it's hard to see because she's black. Here's Nancy, and her fur is very, very short and uh, definitely more fine, not as, not as thick as the other cats upstairs, but I'm wondering if, if it's because it's like a kitten coat. Do kittens have different coats than adult cats? And also, I'm wondering if it's, um, you know, diet, because I noticed a change in uh, my cats as far as their fur goes after they were on raw food for a while. And that's the very first thing that I was told. So the first time I went to buy commercial raw food in a pet store, uh, there happened to be a rep from nature's variety there, which is instinct. And I was talking to her about it and she said when she put her cats on raw food, it completely changed their coats. Their coats became fuller and fluffier. And that's definitely uh, how I would describe uh, Stella, Simba, Splash, and Boo's coats. Their fur is definitely very full and also fluffy. Um, Simba has the longest fur of the bunch. Stella has the fullest fur of the bunch, like her fur is so dense. And then Boo would have, um, I don't know if he has the shortest fur, like Splash and Boo pretty much have the same kind of fur. 
Um, it's not as dense as Stella's and it's not as long and fluffy as Simba's. It's kind of like in the middle. So I'm just curious to find out what's going to happen with, um, with these cats. Are they going to keep this really short, fine fur or is it going to change? Like, like Sammy's fur has definitely changed. I mean, I don't know if you could see, it's just really thick and really dense and really puffy, right? I mean, it's still short, but it's really thick much more thicker than Richard's. Right, Sammy? So in the morning, the cats get some treats that I feed them by hand. And these are some blue wilderness treats. And this is what they do. I usually just sit here on the couch or somewhere and then they gather around me. And then they'll each get fed a treat or two by hand. It's like their daily communion. All right, guys, ready? Want some treats? Okay, hold on. Here you go. Peace be with you, Sammy. Peace be with you, Richard. Peace be with you, Goldie. Peace be with you, Nancy. Nancy. Peace be with you, Ziggy. Peace be with you, Eva. Eva does not eat it out of my hand. I have to throw it at her. There's Ringo. He does not want any treats this morning because he is too interested in this toy. So I'm really happy I put it down here. But what's interesting is that when it was upstairs, nobody would play with it. I mean, it's the same exact toy. It's just in a different location. Nobody wanted to play with it. Okay, next round of treats. God bless Sammy. God bless Richard. God bless Goldie. God bless Ziggy. Eva. Eva. Nancy. 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 Come here. You had yours. Nancy. Nancy. God bless Nancy. I threw one at Eva. Oh, Goldie got it. Here, Eva. God bless Goldie. What I just realized today is that there are seven cats here, seven kittens. And two of them are boys and there's five girls. And if I would have known that there were seven and five girls and two boys, I might have named them after the children in The Sound of Music. So Ringo would be Kurt. And Richard would be Friedrich. And Nancy would be Liesel. And then we would have Louisa, Brigida, Marta, and Gretel. I don't know who Sammy would be, though, because she's such a Sammy. Maybe she would be Gretel. No, Gretel would be... Little Eva would be Gretel because she's the smallest. And then Marta and Brigida would probably be the torties. Actually, Marta would be Ziggy because she's... Um, she's probably also the smallest now, Little Eva's probably bigger than her, but I just feel like the name Gretel fits Little Eva so much more so than Ziggy. No, I think Goldie would be Marta, and Ziggy would be Brigida. So it would be Brigida, Marta, Gretel, and then it would be Louisa or Liesel. I think Sammy would be Louisa, and Nancy would be Liesel, or maybe vice versa. I don't know. But anyway, it would fit perfectly. It would absolutely fit perfectly, and, and if I would have known, I might have done that because I probably have seen the Sound of Music movie more than any other movie ever. I even went to Salzburg, Austria, and took the Sound of Music tour when I was in college, so these could have been the Sound of Music cats. And there they are. Six cats eating and Nancy walking around. Nancy likes to eat last, or she likes to hold out for canned food or crunchies. And sometimes little Eva follows her when she does that. I just came upstairs after trying to get Richard downstairs and he was looking at Simba and Simba is growling. I'm gonna pick Simba up and put him in my room, Stella and Splasher in my room with the door shut. So then that'll be that. And then it's just Boo and Richard up here. For some reason, Richard wanted to come upstairs today really early. 
Okay, so Boo's in his room, Stella, Splash, and Simba are in my room, and Richard's wandering around, and Nancy just came upstairs. So I'm gonna let all the kittens up. I still have to scoop all the litter, and today is Monday. It's the first work day of the week, so I need to get a lot of stuff done. Here's Boo in his room, he loves his room. I still need to spend more time, um, you know, integrating the cats and, um, you know, getting them together, but it's a balancing act and it has to be a slow process. If the cats were all living outside, it would be on their time frame. It would not be on my time frame. And people have to remember that, that whenever I, hey! holy God, how is Richard in here? Okay, Richard just left and that is why I don't trust Richard with the cats without my supervision. You okay, Boo? Boo has some fur in his mouth. You okay, Boo? You okay? How'd you get fur in your mouth? Okay, be good, Boo. It is 7.30 p.m. I'm just about to feed the cats dinner and look at what Boo did. He pulled the mouse out. He sat down next to this toy and he pulled the mouse out. Right, Stella? I saw that, Boo. You gonna kiss your girl? It is mail time. The cats got a whole bunch of mail. They got some really big packages. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. We're gonna start with two very big boxes from George Senda. Thank you so much, George. I have to be careful how I film this because it says open from the top only. All right, let's see what's in the box. So it looks like we have some reusable plastic bags, which is nice because they've been outlawed in New Jersey. So we can't get them here anymore and I have to buy them. So it looks like George is sending some to take care of us with that. Thank you so much, George. I can always use plastic bags. Oh, and look what we have here. We have some paper plates for the cats because George knows that I feed the cats on paper plates. We have some more bags. Thank you very much, George. The cats will enjoy these very colorful plates. They'll be very nice for summer. And we have some napkins to go along with the paper plates. I'll probably use these napkins myself because the cats don't really use napkins. So thank you, George. Oh, look at this. This is cute Fiesta. It's like a party. And here's another set of napkins. Oh, and look at this. It is a C's candy bag and it is a patriotic bag. I might give this one to Grandma Farrell because she was born on Flag Day and she likes anything with American flags. Thank you very much, George. And here's another bag from Seas Candy and this has beach umbrellas on it and I love the beach. So I will be using this one myself. Thank you very much, George. And here's another reusable bag and this has lots of pickup trucks on it with a Valentine's Day theme. Stella loves pickup trucks. Thank you very much. Ooh, and the cats got some catnip. They love catnip. And they got some temptations. And these are some really good special occasion treats for the cats. And here's another bag of temptations. Thank you very much, George. The cats are gonna enjoy these treats. And look at this decoration. It is a pickup truck and it says spring is here. That is really cute. Stella loves her pickup truck, so I'll make sure I hang this somewhere where she could admire it. And here's another set of napkins. And we got some Fancy Feast Savory Cravings Beef and Crab flavor. And we got some treats. These are Blue Wilderness or Blue Buffalo Bursts. It says with savory seafood. The cats really like these. Thank you so much, George. And here's a few more packages of the Blue Buffalo Bursts. And we have more napkins. And here's another set of napkins. 
another bag another package of the bursts cat treats and here we have some snowman plates super cute look at this little halloween bag and it says boo on it that is really cute i use these little tiny bags when i have to go to the post office and mail um, like cards and like letters that size stuff these come in handy so i don't lose anything thank you george and here we have nice autumn plates and here's some more autumn plates and some fancy feast savory cravings chicken flavor and here are two more of the fancy feast savory cravings and here's a spatula and look at what it says it says you've been booed that is so cute i've never seen this before thank you george he said there might be something fragile or breakable in here so i'm trying to be careful What is this? Oh, maybe this is... Okay, what do we have here? Look at this, it's a Halloween decoration with a skull wearing a top hat and it says Boo. Boo's going to love this. This will be fun to put out on my Halloween mantle. Thank you very much, George. And check it out, I think it lights up. Yeah, look, it lights up. I don't know if you could tell, but the lights are on. Boo will have his name in lights. So cute. And the cat's got a snacky snowman. They always enjoy these toy treat dispensers. Thank you very much, George. And there's still more. And what is this? Oh, it's a doormat. Look at that doormat. It says Boo on it. That is so cute. I've never seen this before in any of the stores. Thank you so much, George. This will be wonderful around holiday time. All right, let's see what else we have in here. I see a pumpkin. Check out this pumpkin. Oh, it says C's candies on it. Is it a tin? Oh, it's like a tin. Oh, that's cute. So it could be used like a decoration. And then it has some, it looks like, it looks like they're pumpkin gumdrop type candies. It says sour orange pumpkins. Oh, that's really cool. I've never tried those. And that's a really cute pumpkin tin. I'll definitely be putting this on my Halloween mantle also. Thank you, George. And the cat's got another snacky snowman. And here's a snacky mouse. And they got a bag of chicken flavor temptations. I normally save temptations and treats like that for special occasions for the cats, for holidays, and for their birthdays. So now I am set. Richard came to see what's going on. How you doing, Richard? This is the second box from George Senda. And this one has a card in it. It's a Christmas card. Look how funny this is. So this guy was just pulled over and the cop is like missing anything and his Christmas tree has crashed into the windshield of the cop car. That is so funny. It says, hope your Christmas is smashing. The cats wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a meowy New Year. Fluffy, little girl, mama cat, kitten cat, tiny one, little sweet gray, the big headed but very sweet and soft gray and shy gray. Have a great holiday season. Hugs, George, from I and all the kitties. We have some bags. We have some more bags, and look at this, it's chocolate. He said some of these are for grandma and grandpa, so I will make sure to pass some of the bags on. We have this chocolate. Here's another Seas Candy chocolate bag. Looks delicious. And here we have flag bags, and another flag bag, and a beach bag, and a whole bunch of Target bags. Thank you very much, George. I'll be using these bags. Here's another C's candy tote bag. And we have some Hanukkah napkins. And we have some Christmas napkins, two different sizes with the red poinsettias, very pretty. And we have some Hanukkah plates. And he said something in here is breakable, so I have to be, be careful. And we have some more of these pumpkin tins, really cute. I think they have the candy inside. Yep, with the candy inside. 
Thank you, George. There is, there's four of them. Here's another tote bag. There's a Seize Candies catalog. Another flag bag. Oh, I think this is what he was talking about. Isn't that cute? With the cat in the witch's hat with the mask on. And here's some more bags. I am set with bags. And here's another snacky snowman. It's very nice of you to send all these treat dispensers to the cats. This is a bar of 365 organic dark chocolate. George knows I love dark chocolate. Thank you very much, George. And here's a bar of extra dark chocolate from Seas Candy. And we have some Fiesta plates. Those are really cute. And Hanukkah plates. And another bag of Temptation savory salmon flavor. And here are some more snacky mice. Here's a bunch of packets of Swiss Miss dark chocolate hot cocoa. I've never had these before. And here are some more of the little tiny C's candy bags. Really cute. And a bunch of napkins, Christmas napkins, Hanukkah napkins, Fiesta napkins. And look at these little cupcake toppers. It's a black cat and it says boo, isn't that cute? So it's a set of cupcake toppers, really cute. And here we have two snacky snowmen. And here's another extra dark chocolate candy bar. And what is this? It's a fruit cake, a vintage fruit cake, because food only gets better with age. Is there really a fruitcake in here? Oh no, it's Seas Candy. So here's another extra dark chocolate bar. Here are some lollipops. And here's another lollipop and a chocolate bunny. Let's check out this fruitcake box because it is so funny. So it says vintage fruitcake because food only gets better with age. Here on the side it says, did you know the glaze on a fruitcake can preserve it for hundreds of years? It's true. Chew on a mouthful of history with vintage fruitcake. The fruit has gotten fruitier and the cake cakier. It's a flavor experience you'll never ever forget. And then there's a photo. And on the back it says, this is not your grandmother's fruitcake, it's her grandmother's. And this says it's fully matured alcohol, 45% by volume, 90 proof. And that's from Maker's Mark Bourbon. Now this side it says 100 years old fruitcake, 100% fresh at some point. It's a 100 year old party in your mouth. That is so funny. Thanks for sharing that, George. And on this note, he says that Johnny Carson thought there was only one fruitcake in the world and people just kept giving it to each other. He says, I think he was right. Stolen from Germany is good. Yes, yeah, stolen from Germany is very good. Thank you so much, George, for sending the cats and myself all of these goodies and for sending some items for grandma and grandpa. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're feeling better and we appreciate you thinking of us. This was very generous for you to send us all of these items. Okay, we have another box here, and this is from Craig. This says, hi again, just another note to tell you I had to give the cats some treats. I don't know if they would like the shrimp and pink crab meat. Also the packaged chicken, but hope so. Bye for now, from the heart, Craig. Thank you very much, Craig. And look what we have here. We have a card, isn't that pretty? With the blue birds and the American flag. Hi, Miss LF. I have enclosed a few odds and ends I've picked up in my travels and thought of you. I like to check out yard sales and thrift shops, some nice finds. The cats are getting so big and the resident cats are as special as ever. I love Boo, how he runs to sit with you while you work, as always, from the heart, Craig. Thank you very much, Craig, for that lovely note. And here's another one. It says, hi, Miss LF. Just a note to let you know, I am still an avid watcher. The kittens are getting so big. I think you are creating a family of super cats. You feed them so well with herbs, fresh ground meats, etc. I'm watching season six, episode 146, Leave It to Eva. It is so hard to pick a favorite. I loved it when Ziggy rubbed her face on your hand on the day sofa, rolling around experiencing new sensations. I don't envy you having to decide what to do with them. I'd like to keep them all. 
I've been putting together a collection of gifts for you, just a few odds and ends I've picked up in my travels. You can find the Coasters Online Collectibles, I think, by for now from the Heart Craig. Thank you very much, Craig, for these lovely cards and the note inside the cards. We hope you're doing well. And let's see what's here. So the cats got some Rachel Ray Nutrish Love Bites, crunchy and tender treats for cats. I've never seen these before, so the cats are gonna try these. Thank you very much. They got some Star Kissed Premium White Chicken and another package of Star Kissed Premium White Chicken. And here are some Meow Mix Irresistibles. The cats have never tried these before. And look at these adorable bag clips. Can you see them? They're black cats. They're so cute. So it's a set of six bag clips. I will definitely be using these. Thank you so much. Here's some note paper, some post-it notes. This is a Sierra Club notebook. Miss LF, I returned the confirmation form. I want you to know I'm not trying to get you to donate to any cause, just passing along some info. And this says love and liberation for animals in laboratories. This is a book from PETA. That's interesting. I've never seen this before. Thank you very much, Craig. And what do we have here? And here we have some coasters and look at this cat. It kind of looks like Stella. And here's a, another tabby. Oh, and here's a black cat. It looks like Boo. And here's another cat. And another cat. Thank you very much for these adorable coasters. And look what we have here. It's a little photo album. It says place cats photos here and name below. It's really cute. Then it has some stickers. And then here are the pages. So you could put a photo here and then you could write some information about it. That's really nice. Thank you so much. Very, very cute. And here's a can of bumblebee pink crab meat. I don't think the cats have ever tried this before. And here's a can of bumblebee tiny shrimp. The cats love tiny shrimp. I normally buy the frozen tiny shrimp, but maybe they'll like the can also. And here's a mug. It says everything tastes better with cat hair in it. I don't know about that, but it's a very cute mug with all of the paw prints on it. And the paw prints are made from little hearts. That's so really cute. There's a black cat on top like Boo. And is this a note? This says, can't say I agree with the saying on the cup. Okay, well, I guess great minds think alike. But aside from that, I thought it was a cool black cat and paw prints. See, we thought the same exact thing. Besides what good are cup coasters without a cup? I do a lot of thrift shop looking and on occasion find some cool stuff from it. Thank you so much, Craig. This is a very, very cute mug. It actually is the same exact size of a mug that I had but that got broken, so uh, this will replace that one. Thank you so much for thinking of us. And then here we have a hummingbird bookmark. Thank you so much, Craig, for sending all of these goodies to the cats and to myself. The cats will really enjoy all of the treats. And thank you so much for watching the videos and supporting the channel. And we hope you are doing well. Okay, we have one more package left. And this is from Sharon. Let's see what she sent to the cats. Ooh. What do we have here? It's a note. Hi, LF. Just a few toys to give to whomever you would like. Hope you like them. Purrs, Sharon and Sunday. Thank you so much, Sharon and Sunday. Look how cute these are. They're like little rings with all kinds of fabric. Isn't that cute? They're, they're kind of like spiders. It will be interesting to see if the cats like these. And they're so soft. I wish you could feel the material. These are really cute. Thank you so much, Sharon. And look at what else they got. They got these, they're like kickers. Look how cute. This one looks like a snowman. There's a whole bunch of them here. Wow, all the cats can have one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven of them here. All of the cats can have one of these kicker toys. Well, there's even more. Look at that. I could give them to Grandma for her cat. Or cats 
Grandma doesn't know how many cats she has because some come and go. Thank you so much. And here's some more of these, these ring toys. These are like spiders. I'm going to call these spiders because that's what they remind me of. And kickers. Wow. There's a lot of toys here. Look at all these toys. And then here we have some more of the spiders. So cute. Thank you so much, Sharon, for sending all of these toys over. I'm definitely going to be sharing these with people. So I'll definitely be passing some of these on. Thank you so much for thinking of the cats. And I can't wait to see how they like these. We hope you're having a great day. Thanks again.